Hey guys, Darren Graham here with another video today on the Voice of College Football. And also, don't forget to subscribe and all that good stuff to the Big Ten at the Voice of College Football. I am, by the way, the new host of Big Ten Live, which will be debuting our new season with a new host and all that good stuff tonight at 8 p.m. I'm so excited to be there tonight to talk all things Big Ten football with you guys. But first, I wanted to talk a little Michigan football with you guys this morning or early this afternoon or whenever this thing comes out. By the way, feel free to hit that like button and all that good stuff. We had a conversation the other night, and as many people may know, I'm frequently a guest on TJ Ronan's show, The Michigan Call-In Show, and we had a little conversation over there the other night about the Michigan quarterback situation. And now I went on a little bit of a rant in that one, and I feel like it's my bad. I didn't really communicate exactly what I wanted to say in that one. A lot of people took it as me thinking that I'm a 100% all in for Alex Orgy guy. And really, I did think that Alex Orgy should have been the starter at the beginning of the season. If you go back and watch my other channel at Darren Talks Ball, we predicted that Alex Orgy would end up as a starter at the beginning of the season. And people took it that I'm kind of a ride or die Orgy guy. That actually couldn't be further from the truth in some ways. While I do think Alex Orgy is probably the best option for quarterback for this team going forward, I frankly don't know and I don't think it really truly matters who the quarterback is for this team. I think they're all, well, they're relatively set up to fail. And that's exactly what this video is going to be about. I'm going to give you guys three reasons why Michigan's offensive problems, and I'm going to be frank and honest in this one, by the way, to all you Michigan fans out there, Michigan's offensive problems, honestly, are much bigger than the starting quarterback. And that's really how I feel. It doesn't matter who the starting quarterback for this team is, be it Davis Warren, and we've already seen a good dose of Davis Warren in that offense and what it looks like against Fresno State and against Texas. It doesn't matter if Jack Tuttle suddenly gets healthy. It doesn't matter who the starting quarterback is to me, unless these three things get fixed. And honestly, I don't think they're getting fixed anytime soon because it has a lot to do with personnel and, frankly, the arrogance of the coaching staff. I don't think Michigan is set up for a very successful season as a whole, as a team, really, because you simply don't win many college football games playing as poor of offense, especially against quality teams. And don't look now, but there are plenty of quality teams left on their schedule. Again, when you're playing this level of offense and reason number one is the offensive line. Anyone who has known this team or followed this team for very long knows that the structure of this offense starts and ends with the success that the offensive offensive line can have from down to down, because I'm going to be frank. I'm going to be honest with you guys in this one. This isn't exactly a Josh Heupel offense or a Lincoln Riley offense or a even what Georgia Tech is running with some of their option stuff these days or what, by the way, Andy Kotelnicki over at Penn State, chef's kiss. That game against Illinois, that is a man that knows how to call some running plays and some option plays and get his ground game going without necessarily just handing the ball off and running basic duo over and over and over again. But Michigan doesn't have that. By the way, this offense isn't that creative, which is one of my gripes. But the offensive line so far this season has been a huge issue, and it's not one that I think we're talking about quite enough. And it's honestly frustrating to me. It is very frustrating to me. And it is, again, I told you guys I was going to be frank and honest in this one. I told you guys I was going to be a little, well, sometimes I think people just need to hear the truth. Again, it's not the quarterback play necessarily. Again, this offensive line is the foundation for this offense. And this offense only goes as far as the offensive line can carry them because it's not really creative. They don't have star make star players out at the edges, out at wide receiver. We're going to get that into that in a minute. There's not that much inventiveness. So your offensive line really has to shoulder a lot of the burden, especially when the defenses know pretty much what is coming. There has been a track record so far this season of many of this play, these players along the offensive line having, if you pay attention to PFF grades or if you listen or watch the MGO blog guys, their grades are down on this offensive line. They, these players have some of the lowest PFF grades in years for Michigan offensive line players. There's also inconsistency at center. Playing Greg Crippen and rotating him in with Dom Judice 
situationally could be okay, but it's not ideal. This is not an ideal world we're living in for the Michigan offensive line. Maybe one is better at one thing than the other. Maybe in certain situations that could work out. But when have you seen a college football team have a successful season that was rotating offensive line players in, especially the most important one, who is the center, who is the guy making all the calls and the protections and the guy who needs to get in rhythm and cadence with his quarterback? Well, you don't fairly you don't see that fairly often for a reason and it's frustrating it's really frustrating it's frustrating that a lot of people out there again that i see in michigan fan circles are sitting here going well maybe we should have put we could we should have put davis warren in on that last drive against usc thankfully khalil mullings ripped off that big long run what did you think davis warren was going to do in that situation by the way the man had a game a few games ago where he threw 14 passes and three of them were intercepted. Three out of 14 is not winning football. In Fresno State, the game before that, there were interceptions. But interceptions happen not just because the quarterback himself is making mistakes, but because he's under immense pressure. And that's what any quarterback that has had to line up behind that offensive line this season has been under. Now, Alex Orgy did a decent job this past game, but even he was sacked a couple times. Even he was hit and roughed up a couple times. This offensive line is looking a little bit better, but it's still not up to Michigan standards. And again, when you don't have the most inventive, high-flying, creative offense Oftentimes, the defense knows pretty much what's coming. Michigan calls a lot of their base run plays, and they bank on those base run plays being net positives for them because the offensive line will block the play well. They're not calling anything special. They're not calling anything crazy, wild, out of this world. They're calling power. They're calling duo. They're calling gap scheme plays that, have, they're in, that are in most college football teams' offensive playbooks, but they bank on their offensive line being good enough and executing at a high level that those plays will be net positives for them in any game that they play in. And they're frankly not right now. And Evan Link, by the way, had like a seven, a seven PFF grade a couple games ago in pass protection. So it doesn't matter the quarterback that's back there. We talk oftentimes on my channel about the support system that successful quarterbacks need in the college football world. Dylan Riola, by the way, slapped off a little bit in the Illinois game, but so far this season you've seen it at Nebraska with Dylan Riola. What did they do to bring in that freshman first-year starting quarterback and have him at least have some success early in the season? winning some games. They had transfer wide receivers who were pretty good. They were they were brought into the system and brought up to the speed very to speed very quickly. They had an experienced offensive line which has been decently good and they had two really good running backs. Michigan has a little bit of that here and there especially with the running backs but they don't have the full picture which also brings me to wide receiver play. Frederick Moore was a high level, I believe a top 150 or top 100 four star recruit at wide receiver. So far this season, there have been two deep shots that have been thrown to him, and he has completely failed to fight for the ball in the Fresno State game when he got his first chance. Ball ends up being intercepted. And then secondly, he has a deep shot thrown to him by Alex Orgy in the Arkansas State game that he frankly just kind of gives up on. Now, you could argue that Alex Orgy could have been a little more accurate with the ball, that he overthrew him a little bit. But anyone knows on a stop-and-go route like that, when you get separation from the corner, you keep that separation and you run under the ball. And if the quarterback underthrows it a little bit, then you fight for it. But I digress. The wide receiver play also has not provided the quarterbacks with the support system they need. I'm sorry to Kendrick Bell, and I'm sorry to Peyton O'Leary, but they're just guys out there. You can't get separation with your base wide receivers. By the way, those guys are playing as many, and if in some games, more snaps than Frederick Moore and Tyler Morris. I know Tyler Morris was a little banged up and missed a week, but that's who you're playing with. Basically, walk-on level wide receivers who can't get separation in man coverage, and you saw it in this past game as well. Minnesota played man for a lot of the game because they knew that Michigan's wide receivers couldn't get separation. So you have that element with it as well and then we come to play calling which is my third reason why i don't think it matters who the quarterback is at michigan that this offense just kind of is what it is at this point be it davis warren coming back and potentially starting again be it alex orgy be it i don't know i don't know maybe maybe you could get doug flutie to come out of retirement i don't know i don't know i honestly frankly don't care and i am so annoyed by this conversation of who should start and who should play i don't fucking care i don't Apologize for the for the language there. Apologies to Mark for using the the salty language on the channel. But it doesn't matter. It does not matter. An offense 
in modern day college football cannot purely just run on great quarterback play. They need a support system around them as well. Defenses in college football, we talk about this in my channel a lot too, in the metagame have largely caught up to modern day college football offenses. That's why the number of possessions are down, the, the amount of scoring is down from previous years, and that just is what it is. And that goes to my third point as well. You need an offense that is inv innovative, an offense that is pushing the boundaries, and an offense that is able to counter what college defenses are doing in the metagame. And frankly, you don't have that right now. There is no clear plan for Alex Orgy as a quarterback for this team. And you know how I know that? A running quarterback. By the way, I made a mistake in a short I made a few days ago where I talked about Alex Orgy as a, I named him a dual threat quarterback. He's not really a dual threat quarterback. And we've seen that so far. His, his plus attributes are definitely not, you know, his ability to throw the football. Though he did make some decent throws in this game. Like I said in the offseason, anything over about 15 yards, his accuracy just falls off the table. But again, I digress. I know there's no clear, cohesive, competent plan for Alex Orgy as a quarterback of this team because they didn't call a single designed run for him against Minnesota this week. Yes, you heard that right. This team has a running quarterback, and there wasn't a single designed run called all game. Not from what I've seen. The MGO blog guys mentioned it as well, and I trust their analysis. He merely only scrambled, and by the way, when he did scramble, he was only able to get a net 12 yards in this game. Playing in the framework of this offense is not Alex Orgy's thing. You have to bring in some other aspects of other types of offenses that are set for his skill set. And this coaching staff so far, Kirk Campbell and company, have just not done that. So you had your guy that you thought fit this system better. At least that's my perspective and my analysis in Davis Warren. I think that's like why they went with him as a starting quarterback. He couldn't operate at a high level because of the lacking offensive line play and because of the lacking receiver play. Now you bring in the running quarterback and you're not calling plays. You're not calling plays that work for his style of play. You're not. And then we have to get to in my last point here. Part of the play calling, part of what's really, really frustrating is of just the predictable routes on third down. We got to stop with this. We got to stop with this, this shit. It's frankly just shit. Watch a game. <clears throat> and I want you to, well, we can do this with this next game and it's watching it because I'm sure as hell it's going to present itself again in this next game too. Watch any Michigan game, and at some point in the game, they will get to a third and four or a third and five, and they'll go empty or 11 personnel gun or 12 personnel gun, three wide receivers, and you can watch. You can watch because the defenses know it's coming, by the way, by now. If I can see it, I'm no fucking football genius. I'm just a dude with a microphone. If I can see it, you know damn well, especially this weekend, Steven Belichick's going to see it. Watch the defense in those plays, when they get into those sets especially. They'll have two or three linebackers and their safeties all right up on the line to gain. They'll all be lined up on the line to gain. You know why that is? Because several, several times a game, we're calling basically all sit routes or all curls, if you will. Every single damn wide receiver and every single damn tight end is running a short route where they hook right at the line to gain. And guess what? Defenses know it's coming, so there's a safety or a corner or somebody right there to cover it. And what happened in the Texas game when Michigan tried to do that? Davis Warren threw an interception. So I guess there's me being a little bit of a Davis Warren apologist, by the way. I think a lot of, frankly, a lot of Davis Warren's lacking uh, play and the interceptions he has thrown because he did make some good throws so far this season outside of the interceptions. A lot of the interceptions he has thrown has come down to some of these things. Bad play calling, poor wide receiver play, young and experienced wide receivers who are still getting their feet wet, and an offensive line that just frankly, especially in the case of Evan Link, can't pass protect. So to sum this one up, really, with the lacking offensive line play not up to Michigan's standard, with the poor play calling, not being innovative, not being creative, not using your pieces right, and with poor wide receiver play, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is!